Hey guys, this is Sarang from Skilllink and welcome to a new video. Have you ever noticed that space shuttles have blunt noses? These shuttles travel at supersonic and hypersonic speeds when they enter or exit the Earth's atmosphere. So the ideal design would be to have sharp pointed nose, right? At least that's what we feel the ideal shape should be. Believe me, when I say this, a sharp pointed nose will actually be destructive to the space shuttle and that is why a blunt nose is preferred. Let us see how. If you have traveled in a boat or a ship, you would have seen waves form at the bow of the boat and they slowly start to spread out. The same thing happens with air as the aircraft travels through it. Coming to a spacecraft, when it enters the atmosphere, it travels at speeds that are equal or higher than speed of sound. So it creates pressure waves before it. These pressure waves that are formed in front of the spacecraft also travel at the same speed as the spacecraft. Now consider that there are two space shuttles entering the Earth's atmosphere at the same time. One of them has a sharp pointed nose that can travel aerodynamically fast while the other one has a blunt nose. Now as the spacecraft reach the speed of sound, these pressure waves sit at the nose of the aircraft. Now when I say wave, this is nothing but a compressed zone where air molecules are really close to each other. This is what people call as a shock wave, this compressed front of air. Now, in this particular case, it's called as a bow shock wave. Now, as air is compressed inside this bow wave, there will be heat generation. Because of the heat generator, you can get really, really high temperatures that can actually melt the tip of the shuttle. Now, it's very interesting to note that in case of a shuttle with a pointed tip, the bow or the shock wave sits very close to the nose. Whereas, in case of a blunt nose, the bow shock sits at a distance away from the nose. Now, this additional distance that is associated with the blunt body offers additional protection against this excess heat generation for the spacecraft. And this is why a blunt nose space shuttle is much more safer than a space shuttle with a pointed nose. Now, researchers did not know this until 1966. Two researchers named Moretti and Abbott employed a computational fluid dynamics technique called time-dependent approach to solve the problem. If you're someone who's already in CFD, you know that this is actually very fundamental today, but back then, it was a miracle. These researchers needed a computational fluid dynamics program to solve this particular puzzle because you cannot solve this problem analytically. Now, this is why computational fluid dynamics is extremely important. Learning to simulate fluid flow using CFD is a great skill to have, given the rise of computational engineering in recent years. If you are interested in learning more about computational fluid dynamics, check the link below for an amazing set of courses that we have on this topic. Thank you so much. Bye.